the human soul is irresistibly drawn into the investigation of its own mystery. From the beginning of time, mankind has tried to understand his own creation. Great religions have come into existence, religions that have changed man's consciousness, religions that have changed the very face of the earth. Every major faith is split into numerous sects and creeds. Confusion reigns where there should be unity and the peaceful satisfaction of the yearning heart. Is it possible that the author of this vast creation would reveal one principle to one group and yet another principle to others? Because we have failed to study all the religions of the world as a whole, we have so far been unable to discover the mighty law of nature responsible for the religious impulse. Dogma and tradition remain, and the source has long been lost. Time and again, great spiritual leaders such as Pandit Gopi Krishna will appear on the horizon whenever mankind is in dire need of guidance at the most crucial time in its history. The Pandit, as all great spiritual leaders, has said there is a single underlying principle responsible for the religious and moral impulse. This principle, called Kundalini, was also known to the ancients thousands of years ago. This energy, which has always been symbolized as a coiled up serpent, is situated at the base of the spine. The records of Egypt, South America, China, and even early Christianity used this symbol. The Pharaoh's headdress, the plumed serpent of the Incas, all refer to this secret knowledge. When this energy rises from the base of the spine and enters the brain, it results in a higher state of consciousness. A dedicated group of North Americans traveled to the mountains of Kashmir to learn the secrets of this lost knowledge. Here is the story of their journey. was rising and so were our weary spirits as we arrived in Delhi. A year of waiting was almost over, but first the official press conference. What are these North Americans all about? And the latest temperature is at 25 degrees centigrade or 77 degrees south. About seven years ago I was involved in an accident where I had been deprived of oxygen for over several minutes and I was declared dead seven years ago. During those few elated minutes, what I visualized, what I have seen and perceived 
It changed my life 180 degrees. Um, I had seen colors and I had seen lights and I had seen uh, to some degree uh, feelings and consciousness that was not available in any books nor was any guru or lama in the Western world was able to tell me what I have seen. There's a proved medical fact that there's a difference between a clinical death and actual death. You know, where the oxygen is still in the brain cells and as long as that presence is there in the brain cells, a person can be revived. Don't you think it was rather an emotional trip or something to do with the subconscious that made you see these colors? I think the point is, and, and this is something that Tanak Gobi Krishna is talking about too, I believe, that it's a very real experience, okay, that, that something biological is also involved and, and Joe went around the world and he talked to many different people and no one was able to tell him the quality of his experience except for this one man right? which means that maybe he also experienced or he was aware of the state of consciousness that he was involved with okay not whether he was actually dead or not I mean I don't know if anybody could ever say right? but he experienced something in his own mind which is in a very real sense real to other people too because they have a similar type of experience. You say you reach a certain state of consciousness. That's right. And you say that it was not uh, explained by anybody else. That's right. Uh, after my experience, uh, I decided that I no longer wanted a businessman. I no longer wanted to have any financial rewards. Money had no longer had any interest in my life whatsoever. Because I, when I changed so drastically by, uh, by applying simple principles in life, I decided to form an organization which is called PSI, People Searching Inside. It is a spiritual organization based on simple principles that when you follow a certain way of life, one can change his life drastically. And only several years later, two or three years later, have I met Pandit Gopi Krishna. And then I formed additionally the Tooth PSI, the Canadian Psychic Research Foundation, <coughs> and the Kundalini Research Institute of Canada. What we hope to prove in the near future, with a proper investigation, we're inviting scientists, we're inviting people who carry a great deal of honor as well as responsibility and recognition in the world to come and investigate us. What we're doing now is to prove mankind there are equally important spiritual laws that you cannot prove instantly. However, if you apply some of these principles daily, you will see the ramification of it and perhaps two or three months later, you'll see the results. And I know that someday this will be proved. Okay, it's only a matter of time. And finally, in a garden filled with sunshine, we greeted the man we had come so far to see. The man whose writings had lifted our hearts and given us hope for the future took the stage, humbly accepting our affection and warming us with that unforgettable smile. It is difficult to describe the kindness, the goodness, the light shining from his eyes. Distinguished panel, distinguished press, ladies and gentlemen, 